Hi and welcome back. Um, what we're actually trying to do today um, is make one of these. We've got an automatic cat feeder and it keeps, and we're away a lot obviously um, with shooting and so on in competitions, I've just got back from one. Uh, we have an automatic cat feeder which you'll see later on in the video, but it keeps stripping, it keeps stripping this cog. I've repaired it before by filing and messing around, but it's been a waste of time. Uh, so what I've decided to do is make another one out of brass. Now, as you can see, this is um, all been it's been pressed, made as one unit. It's all part and parcel. So you've got two different size splines, all in one. So what I'm going to venture to do is make this one, then this one, and then press them together. So we've worked out from measurements that uh, the smallest one is it's 28 teeth, so or splines, plus two. This is all you know from the machine machinery handbook. So all there's plenty of um, interest and stuff in there on there's hundreds of pages on making gears, and that's what that is. It's a gear. There's, there's absolutely loads of stuff, and there's some great videos. Tubal Kane does a good video on uh, producing gears. There's lots of really good videos, and there's one really good one. If I can find a link to it, I'll um, I'll put it I'll put it in the in the in the uh, in the heading somewhere. But what we're going to do that make this small one first is it's 28 tooth, so it's 28 plus two equals 30. And then the diameter, that's, that's across here, is 0 0.5785. So what we do is we do 30 over 0 0.5785, which gives us a DP of 51. Now we need to know... Um, how many thousands, thousands of an inch we need to cut these teeth deep so we use a constant out of the machinist handbook which is 2.157 and that's over DP so it's 2.157 divided by 51 which the DP is diametrical pitch by the way and uh, that gives us a tooth depth of 42 thou and the other tooth it's exactly the same but it's it's 24 so this is 24 teeth they're a lot larger as you can see and it's 24 plus 2 is 26 over the diameter which is an inch which is uh, 26 diametrical pitch and these are 20 degrees by the way teeth not 14.5 uh, most things now are, are 20 degrees because they're actually quieter they tell me that's why they've gone on to 20 degrees so it's a 20 degrees pressure angle so the pressure angle is 20 degrees sums 14.5 I think and you get a set of about eight gear cutters for that um, I think there's eight I think there was 16 but they don't do our size anymore so it's, it's down to eight now um, and you can get a full set but when you start talking of 20 degrees cutters um, that's an old new ball game and there's, there's, there's probably a hundred of them, there's a lot anyway. So what I've done is, as you'll see in the video, I've actually made cutters to cut these teeth because I, I didn't have any proper gear cutters for that size, so I've actually made it out of high speed steel. Uh, so it's 24 teeth, so it's 24 plus 2 gives a diametral pitch of 26. Um, Sorry, over over one inch gives us diametrical pitch of 26. So for the depth, it's our constant again, which is 2.157 over the diametrical pitch. So there we have that. Tooth depth then will be 83,000. It's 82.9, 8296. Uh, so we'll call it 83,000. So we, we're down here, 83,000. And I've measured all these with verniers and we're about right. There is another, another mathematical 
equation, which I can't remember off the top of my head. It's I think you divide the diametrical, diametrical pitch by 25.4. That's something I'd have to look up. I should have um, done my own work on that before I, I really said anything. But I'm sure it's 25.4, and that's another way of doing it. But I'm not sure if if what we divide it by. I can't remember. It's a while since we've but I've, I've cut gears, so and I haven't done a lot of it in the past. But machinery handbook is the uh, is definitely the way to go. Anyway, what we'll do, um, we'll get on with the video and we'll start cutting these, and then uh, you'll see the cat feeder working at the end of it. Okay. Right, here we go. So we start. I'll show you the finished product. What we've got going. Full turn and nine, and I'll show you this little bit in a minute. Running about a thousand revs a minute there. Sweet. Dividing head, one full turn and nine holes. It could go a lot faster than this, not, not the speed, but the, the travel of the bed, but uh, of the table. But uh, there's no need, there's a very, very small amount of vibration. And one thing you do want to be aware of, if you're using fly cords and things like this, any cloths or rags and things like that, just don't get them anywhere near it. Because if they grab it, they'll have to take your arm in as well. So do be aware of fly cutters and th this type of... Uh, Cutter. They are stuck out. I'll show the DRO going uh, counting down and, and you'll see what kind of speed it's doing. Alright, again, this is the indicator. So it's one full turn and nine holes. And you move the oh shit. That shouldn't have done that. It's moved. I'll have to tighten it up again. It isn't the best of things that. I'll mark it and tighten it up. You can see the DRO counted down on the X. Look, Alan Pierce gave me. You should check Alan Pierce's channel out, by the way. Alan Pierce in Lincolnshire. Sweet. And a nice little box too. It was over at his house the other day, and he's got quite a few of them. So he he uh, he gave me one. Beautiful. I shall treasure it. Thank you, Alan.
there you go. There's another cog I should press onto that. Another cog I'll press onto this. The same as this one. Which then dri which then drives this one. So that one drives another cog at the bottom underneath it, which drives this one. You see? So far so good. Right, all I've got to do now is make one of those. And I'll, what I'm going to do, stop it before I get my screwdriver into it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press it onto these splines. So I shall make it like that, with more or less the same as that, with a slightly bigger hole in it. So then I can just press it onto those splines and it'll grip. So it'll be brass onto brass and slide it on. I'll just keep uh, taking the center out of it in the lathe until it slides on, grips onto those quite nicely, and then we'll cut it. Right. So far, so good. Right, now we're into round two. Um, we've got the small cog made, the inside. Now we're just making the outside one, and this is what this one's looking like. You've got probably a better view than me. So that's what we're trying to form there. I've made a forming tool. Um, I've just basically I've made it to suit that as it's cutting round. So I've, I've tried to replicate each spline in a tool. And that's basically what we're doing. I'm not happy about that tool, it keeps going a bit loose, I think. Which is not good. Let's have a quick look. Let's keep my eye on that. I think it's slightly moved. Right. Unlock the lock. One full turn and 14 holes. Lock it back up. I'm running at about 600 revs a minute now, slower than what I was. It's, uh, I'm taking quite a big cut, I think, and I think the tool's quite as sharp as it could be. I could have probably made a better job of it, to be fair. Tired eyes at night, I suppose. I'll show you the cog in the uh, splines at the moment in a minute, and uh, you can have a look. I'm watching the DRO, so I'm going through a set amount. zero then we stop. As you can hear it's a bit thumpy. I'm taking 80 3000 at a time so probably plenty.
And there we have it. I'm certainly going to have to keep my eye on that tool. Not rocket science. Right, I'll turn you off. There's no point in you watching this. I want to get round. I'll uh, we'll see how it goes when we part it off. And what the idea is, by the way. This is what it's sitting on, as you can see. That one's finished sitting on that and it dries from the back and then what I'm going to do because I've made that a lot bigger is I'm going to just press that inside there so this outer cog will be part of that a little bit of glue around there or lock tight again should be okay so it's just going to be an irritated fit in there and with it being splined it, you know it grips quite well so that's the plan and that the the big sprocket goes on the bottom and then that will go on the top and then the big sprocket dries another one here, which dries another one here. There's about ten in it, it's ridiculous. But anyway, if we can get it going, we get it going. If not, had a bit of fun. Right, as you can see, we're ready to part it off. We've got the, the cog cut. It hasn't gone fantastic. We've had a few problems, which uh, when I've got all this done, I'll i run through what we've had problems with. Um, anyway, such is life. These things happen and they shouldn't, but uh, they certainly do. So anyway, we'll whip this off and then uh, go from there. I've got my drill truck in there just to catch it when it comes off. We're just making it a little bit bigger than what it wants to be, but I can always just run it, rub it down on some... Uh, paper and make it sort of narrower. It's a little bit too wide of it, but we need to flat it off anyway, so. Tight enough brass is nice, isn't it? running about 540 yeah it's flat out on the various so it's running about 540 Bit of tying up and a bit of filing and see if it works, yeah? going to press it in, as you can see. And that should grip forever in the day, I think. Alright, <coughs> hoping you can see that. So all I've done is carried these on, which dries from the other sprocket, all the way through. And then I bought this out with the boring bar, this outer socket. Sorry. This outer sprocket. And then I've just pressed it on. And it's going to be an irritated fit. I could put some Loctite in there, but I don't think there's any need to. Um, I'll just show you what on the... And that's how it dries. 
I might just have to take a little bit more off the back of that, a little bit too high. Um, it's just, it's just proud of, just proud of here. Be probably ten thou or so, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, probably twenty thou. So it's a little bit proud. But apart from that, that's what that was, and that's what it is now. So hopefully. So it's. Uh, I've just been through some of the gears with these these files. I got them from my DC actually. Um, little diamond files. There's all sorts of uh, different ones. Let's get the camera a bit further away. And there wasn't there wasn't expensive probably uh, probably about a tenner or something like that. Oh, over so expensive, but this one's a tapered one. Look on it, if you can see that on the camera, it's tapered. The, the diamond, and uh, for little jobs like this, they're quite good. It does tell you on them actually what grit they are. That's 150, there's 150, 150, 200, there, 200, 200, 200, 400, 400. So, yeah, they seem okay to be fair. I'm not going to grumble at them for a tenner or whatever I paid for them. Probably on offer, it's not, I don't know. But yeah, it was RDCs anyway, so. Right, I'm going to see if I can fit this into the, the feeder. We might have to take a little bit more off it. But um, and once I get it in, I'll wire the motor up direct. And uh, we'll, uh, we can see if, if, if uh, you know, it turns right. But I think it will. You know, it's, it's, the gears are good and tight. You know, there's, there's not a lot of slop in there, is there? <laughs> So, let's see. We'll go give it a go, and I'll get back to you. Well, there you go. You can put some resistance on it as well if you want. It's got to lift these flaps up in the cat feed. Not much resistance on there. It's not a lot of them. Turn these cups. I'm going to take a lot of turn. What tends to happen is um, what's been happening is something gets stuck in the feeder, probably a, a, a pellet, and it just strips this cog completely. It doesn't bother these. But it just strips this, and the one inside is a little bit damaged. So what I did, I made this centre one very, very, very slightly larger, only two thou. Then, so it's got a lot of pressure on the plastic cog, or a little bit more pressure, probably five or six thou more pressure on the plastic cog. And the inner in here, there is a little bit of slop in it. It's ten mil, and I reamed it, so it is round. Um, there is a little bit of bit of slop. Nothing getting warm. Um, but as you can see, seems to work okay. So, you know, they're fiddly little things. Cutting cogs that small <laughs> is, uh, is really fiddly. Better to do something big. But I've had some problems with the, uh, with the cutter. I'll just take you across. I can get it out of the mill. I'll probably show you. There you go. She works anyway. You've seen it go around for a lap, I'm sure. You see the scoops coming around here. And the food, there's a big opera fits on the top. It the big opera fits on the top here, and it's, that's it. Scoops it up inside there. There's two of them. It's about. It tips it out the back here, and then when it comes round to the flat, you'll see it, it'll jump. 
Right, the problem we had, this is Al's um, gear cutter, or, <coughs> or Arbor for a gear cutter, uh, what we made. We've done, we've done other gears on it before and we have had problems with it. We have problems with these tool bits coming out. Pain. And you can see that one hasn't sat in there. Completely tight. It has been a real pain. Um, I grown this, this bit up this morning, as you can see, it's, it's full length, more or less full length. Now what I was trying to do, and, and that's my grinding, if you can see, that's the shape of the cog. So all I've done is replicate that on the grinder, as you can see. I hope you can see it. I've just replicated that. And I did do it with this one as well. This is what a bit of tool steel that Al gave me, and... Uh, I don't know. I've got it a bit wonky, that one, though. I didn't get that one quite right. I didn't get that one quite right. Anyway, that was the other side. That's the one that cut the small the small um, cog there. If we call them cogs, I'll call them cogs. Um, so that, that's 20 degrees. And uh, that just went in like that and cut it like so. I did that on the surface grinder. I'll lend me his... I'll lend me everything, doesn't he? Uh, do go check his channel out there because he does do some good stuff. He lent me his angle plate. I do have one of my own, but uh, not as good as Al's. Al's is a, you know, a really nice one. Um, so yeah, this is all borrowed stuff of Al's. But, um, yeah, that was just too small. I think what happened was, let me whip this out, it wasn't gripping. But when Al's made this, I think he could have probably made it a little bit, a little bit bigger. It's just a thought if you're ever making one. You know, just take it in consideration. I think these studs are far too small, to be fair. I think you'd be better to go gear up with them. Um, you probably could go make it slightly wider and put a bit of brass in here as well. That might grip it. I'm not sure. But as you can see that, and look, it hasn't sat completely down. I've had a file in there this morning and just filed it out a little bit, but it doesn't... The fit's just a little bit too mean. That's the tool still was in. It's slightly smaller than mine, I think. But I had that stuck out very, very shallowly. Which would be like that. Like that. And was only gripping on these two buttons here. And what was happening was this was creeping down. It was all the time trying to creep down. It didn't particularly want to go in. But it crept down, and when we've we've used this for gear cutting before, which was with this tool in it, we did um, we did a, a spline. We had the same problem, and it, it and that fits in reasonably good that one. Um, we had the same problem with them working down, and I'm not 100% sure if this couldn't do probably with the corners tightened up a little bit. Anybody got any suggestions? You know, say so. If it could be to do, probably to do, be a bit wider or something, but um, it's it's a good heavy bit of kit. Um, it's just that we do have this problem with it, but I'm not 100% sure if the these studs are, are big enough. I think probably iron sight they could have done to go a little bit bigger, and um, stuck out. It doesn't matter if the stick, you know, if it was stuck out here. It wouldn't matter anyway, you know, you know, if it was longer and stuck out more or a bigger head on them, it wouldn't matter. You know, you don't, so you're not going to catch your work. I did see two volcano had one, his was stuck out a lot more. But, uh, yeah, any any thoughts on it, let us know. But, yeah, I've had a few problems trying to pick up a thread um, or a, a cog is not uh, the easiest things to do. But, anyway, I managed it, and as you can see, it does work all right. It's not exactly a precision instrument, is it? But, um I've got it pretty good, so I'm happy with it. So, anyway, that's Al's tool. Thanks very much for lending us, Al. Uh, there's his bits, that's mine. And we just made one of those. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'm sure the cat will be very happy it's got its feeder back. Just go show you can do it with a few home tools, milling machine. Um, it's just all good fun, isn't it? Alright, thanks for watching. Bye bye.